All right, so let's talk about the Falcons. Uh, another disappointing ending to the playoff run. Welcome to the experience of being an Atlanta fan. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Listen, the, the, the Falcons' problems start and stop with Matt Ryan. <laughs> they, don't, just, they neither start nor stop they, with they, Matt Ryan. They, they, they start and stop with Matt Ryan. Listen, <laughs> you cannot be... You, you're the only quarterback to score two points. You didn't even score the two I was going to say, you didn't score the didn't two, score points. two points. He didn't score two points. He's the only quarterback to usher in a uh, team to score two points. You cannot even score So it's because three. he performed poorly. That's the reason. He, he is a piss-poor quarterback. He's not a piss-poor quarterback. He's he, statistically goal. above average. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, right. Like, Can we at least agree that most of our problem offensively was Mike Malarkey's idiocy? No, we should probably like. And you go. can't you can't defend our run game, can you? Sure, I can. Like Michael Turner had over. You can't run. name a single high school football coach that calls a worse running game than Mike Malarkey. Well, I don't go around looking at high school teams. Uh, uh, high school. <laughs> oh, let's not like pretend that. that's true. Oh. <laughs> uh, listen, we've got Julio Jones. Say what you want to say about the trade; it's over and done with. Yeah, we have Julio Jones on one side, Ryder White on one side, Tony Gonzalez in the middle. Michael Turner is a more than confident running back. If you play fantasy football, which I all know you he, do. He's slow, and he, they only ran him up the middle. That's, be, that's because he's slow. They're not going to run him up. <laughs> okay. So, when you look at the Falcons' weaponry, they should be able to throw the ball downfield. Now, I watched the Houston game, and I saw him overthrow receivers left and right. He is inaccurate throwing the football deep. I would rather have Tim Tebow. Well, throwing the football deep, if we can if we can take whatever it is that Tim Tebow does in the fourth quarter and only throwing deep balls, sure. But that's like saying that you want Reggie Ball to be the quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know who Reggie Ball is, but I'm sure he's more confident. <laughs> he was the Georgia right. Tech quarterback for years. No one cared. He had Calvin Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he yeah. played poorly with Calvin Johnson. That's I why love, you blocked it from your memory. I love Megatron. <laughs> Look, Matt Ryan's not the problem. Uh, he, he might be a problem, but we don't even know yet. That's the bottom line. We don't know whether or not Matt Ryan can be a really successful quarterback in the league. Because for the last several years, Mike Malarkey has been designing our offense, and it has been barbaric is the best word to use. And it when look, Ryan, is Ryan is bad. No, he's not bad. Look, the only argument you can even make is that he's inaccurate throwing the deep ball, and those arguments aren't particularly great given the shoddy state of our offensive line. If you watch that playoff game... You have to concede that our offensive line did a terrible job protecting him. And he got gun shy in the second half. I don't blame him. No, you can't get gun shy. You can't when you get, get gun, pounded you get, that much, I would. He stopped can, spending time looking down the field because he knew he wouldn't have time to make the throws. Joe, if you were an NFL quarterback, I think we would all should be afraid in great ways. However, my point about Matt Ryan is if you are an elite quarterback, Eli Manning was facing just as much pressure. That, as that is a lie. That is a lie. That is massively not true. I mean, he was facing pressure early on. The defense did a good job, but he wasn't getting pressure the way that Matt Ryan was getting pressure. I don't think Matt Ryan we was were getting blitzing, pressure They weren't. Sure, that's fine. But the blitzes were still being effective. The blitzes are the reason we had a, we yes. scored our long two points. And, and, and when they started doing well, it wasn't because Eli all of a sudden became great. It was because the running game broke through. Right, because our defense was on the field so much that because they got tired. Because quarterback sucks. Right? Yeah, well, it's not because our quarterback sucks. Because our whole offense was terrible. No, no, no. You're a quarterback, so I'm no longer a Falcons fan. You're no longer a Falcons fan. You're no. a liar. No, you fuck them. liar. No, fuck that. I want the guy that used to beat dogs. That's what I <laughs> he wasn't having a very good year either. That's what happens after he gets his money. He's been playing like he was beating dogs again. Hey, hey. hey. I'm just saying. We on the podcast are not supporting right, we'll see what podcast. happens. We'll see what happens this year. Look, had they not gotten rid of Mike Malarkey, you know I said this publicly. Okay. I would have. I would, they would be dead to me. I would have taken the sticker off my car. I would have stopped wearing my hoodie. Don't even know what I would wear. It's the only hoodie I have. Be but I, that's the street. right. Which oh. nobody wants. But I, I would have. I would have. They would have been dead to me if had they not gotten rid of Mike Markey. Okay. And now we'll see. Okay. Let, let's let's run through some quarterbacks in the NFL, and you tell me whether or not you will want them. Instead of over, Matt Ryan. Over Matt and, Ryan. and I assume we're talking about, just generally speaking, and not in a Mike Malarkey offense. Sure. However you want to define okay, it. Sure. You want to define a question. Bring okay. it. Uh, let's, let's start in the NFC South. Cam Newton. I like him. I'm not sure how good he can be in the long term. Maybe. Just Cam Newton is that close. Well, you don't even know what kind of a quarterback he's going to be yet. I he's had care. one year in which he did okay. I don't care. He's Superman. You see the little chest? <laughs> Uh, all right. All right. Uh, what's the quarterback down in Tampa? Josh. Josh Freeman. Yes. I don't want Josh Freeman over Matt Ryan. Okay, I agree. 
Um, at least you're somewhat sane. No, no, no. I'm, I'm always sane. I'm the smart one in this whole outfit. <laughs> um, Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler's not in the NFC South, but I, I would well, want, I'm, I'm, I want I'm, Matt Ryan over Jay Cutler. Well, I'm not going to pick... No, no, no fair enough. I want Matt Ryan over yeah, Jay Cutler. Yeah, Drew Brees is obvious. Sure. Uh, uh, so you want... I want Breeze over Matt Ryan. I, I'll, no, take, no, no, no. I'll take Ryan over Jay Cutler. God, I don't want to take Jay Cutler. <laughs> I know you do, but you can't. I can't take You Jay can't. Cutler. Oh, Jay Cutler. I mean, come on. Me. Who are the people that are not obvious? Everybody knows who the very old the, the are. are. Yeah, the obvious ones are uh, Matthew Stafford. Ooh, that's tough. I mean, I, we, we were talking earlier today that, uh, about people's record in, in college, and I thought Stafford really, really underperformed in college. I think... This is the first year that you've seen what he could be like as a pro. And healthy. And, and, yeah, and healthy. But that's a problem. Like, you have to sure. admit that that's an issue with him. Sure. Matt, I'll, Matt I want to see is, another year before I make that determination. Matt, I think Matt at the Ryan, moment it's a close call. I think Matt Ryan is probably the healthier of the two. I'll, well, I, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Stafford if I have a confident court, a backup quarterback. I mean, if I can have Megatron with Stafford, I'll take If I can have Megatron, but, period. All right. I love Megatron. Who else? Um, I mean, all right, let's go to the – I don't even know the Minnesota quarterback. He doesn't count. Um – and of course, Rodgers doesn't count. All right, let's go to NFC North. Here, this is one that started a lot of debate when I brought it up. Yeah, Tony Romo. I don't want Romo. I'm taking Romo all day. Really? Yes. I, I don't want Romo, and it's not because I don't like Romo as a quarterback. I do. Uh, I've drafted him and, and did, therefore ended his season hey, in my fantasy in my fantasy league. I am the black spot of death. Yeah. Uh, I've done that enough to know that he's he can be a good quarterback. I think Rome is in another one of those situations where you can't tell whose fault it is. I just want to blame you right now for my fantasy football team being 12-1. You're finish, welcome. And then going 0-2 uh, in the playoffs to finish kind of the money. Yeah, Thanks. you're welcome. Thanks. Uh, I'm taking Romo. I, I, I'm taking the guy who equally may have like late game collapses but can throw the football better. I mean, I, I'm not really sure that's even true. I think he has we, a We have yet arm. to see Matt Ryan get to throw the football. But Matt Ryan... He's been in the league four years, three. I mean, look, dude. Games. Last year, last year, not not the one that just ended, but the year before that, mm. you can make the argument that Roddy White was the best receiver in football, and you cannot Absolutely. make that that argument without someone to throw him the ball really consistently, and that someone was Matt Ryan. Yes, so let's of, not pretend uh, he of, hasn't done good things. A lot things. of those passes were, you know, Roddy White, Roddy White running precise routes and not running these deep yeah. fly patterns. That's now Julio Jones. That's a terrible argument. Jones. If Roddy's running precise routes, then Matt's throwing precise balls. Sure, I mean, everything under twenty yards, he throws fantastic. Okay, well, even if that, even if that's true, and he can't throw over twenty yards, his arm needs Viagra. Is, no, that is false. Okay. I mean, we were sitting here earlier today looking at replays of him throwing long balls in yes. college, throwing long balls we, in the pros. He can. The question is whether or not. Uh, to me, it's not even a question of whether or not he has arm strength. It's a question of whether or not. He can read defenses in such a way that it allows I, him to throw the football long. I'm not saying that he can't throw the ball deep. My question isn't his arm strength. It's his accuracy. Okay, well then stop saying so, arm strength. I and think I think he can be accurate. We'll see. We'll right. see. Next topic. We thought, Mike, we, we thought Mike, Michael Vick was accurate. Just saying. All right. So we've got the playoffs coming up. Uh, we've got four games to talk about. Well, let's start Let's start here with um, the Aints. I mean the Saints. Um, versus Why you got to hate? I hate the Saints. God, I hate the Saints. Hooray. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's start with the Saints versus the 49ers. Okay. Uh, we've got the team with no defense versus the team with no offense. That is true. Uh, Actually, no... the Saints' defense is not terrible. It's, it's not as bad as Green Bay? No. It's, no, it's, it's not, certainly it's, not as bad as New England. No, it's not as bad as Green Bay. It's, they don't have a pass rush. Now, that they, is they probably get a lot true. Of, they get a lot of turnover, but they don't have a pass rush. All right. Now, you know, I mean, I have to say, and, and maybe it's because I haven't seen a lot of San Francisco games this year, and we've been on the wrong end of the Saints' offensive prowess, but I have a hard time believing that San Francisco can really shut down the Saints. Look, Alan Smith is a rookie uh, linebacker who came out of Missouri, has like 14 sacks, I think a rookie record. They've got uh, Patrick Willis, who, for whatever reason, the Falcons drafted Jamal Anderson over Patrick Willis. This is in the... We drafted Marvin Williams over Chris Paul. Stop saying that. Folder just stacks that You know away. it's an icicle to my heart every time you yeah, say that. Yeah, and so that. is Patrick Willis. He's drinking. Um, but the 49ers defense has been awesome. And if you I mean, look... You're right. They're, they're a great defense. I don't know that they can stop the Saints. The Saints are... And, and Are you aware that Alex Smith is a competent quarterback this year? Yeah, no. I mean, look. The Hard Rock brothers have coached their minds out this year. If you had told me that someone would be able to turn around the 49ers in a year to a team this good, I would have laughed and called you insane. They're a really good team. I'm saying 
Their strength is their defense. I just don't know that it's possible to shut the Saints down that way. Alex Smith has a QB rating of 90.7 for the season. Yes. How That's in the, the non-Trent Dilfer QB rating. What? How? <laughs> How? I mean, he's been competent. Name a receiver they, on that team. Crabtree. Who's that? The guy that held out last year. No, I don't know who that is, but who's that? Well, he's a receiver. No, he doesn't count. Um, <laughs> listen. You're cheating. I, I may have. I may have. Uh, listen, the Dome team going outside, Dome team going to the West Coast, the 49ers have been craving for a playoff game. I think their defense is legit. So, so you think they're going to win? You call it. Uh, Straight up. I, I think last points. year, I think last year they, didn't, they, didn't they beat them? <clears throat> the 49ers didn't beat them last year? In the regular season? Yeah. On Maybe. Maybe. Can we get some like? It doesn't game? matter. That 49ers team was not this year's 49ers team. It's a real. Can, can I get some? You're right. I'm saying they're better now than last year's team. And if the 49ers beat them last year, that game was entirely State, irrelevant. It wasn't even in the same season. I think they put pressure on Drew Brees. I noticed you I haven't think, answered my question yet. What's the question? Will the 49ers win? I, you know, the, <laughs> I, hate the, I also hate the 49ers because I hate Jerry Rice and their receiving hairline affairs with the Drakes. Um, sure, I'm going with the 49ers. I mean, look, I, I'm not going to argue with you too much because I think the 49ers, if the 49ers won this game, I wouldn't be really surprised. Sure. What what would surprise me is if they won it like, you know, 17 to 7. That would really shock me. And you know what the, the 49ers are averaging at home, right? Sure. They're this allowing a, less than 11 points a game at home. Sure. But, so if, if but it was on the 10 to 14 or, you know, even 14 to 21, I, I would be surprised because... Having watched the Saints mm-hmm. dismantle us and, and a lot of other teams, I wonder whether or not it's even possible to do. Last year... So I'll take the Alex, Saints, you take the 49ers. I'm taking the 49ers. I will say this. <coughs> um, the running game of the 49ers to keep out, uh, Drew Brees off the field in that defense, I think will keep that game close in the fourth quarter. And I'll take the home team because they're the home team. I mean, team. don't sleep on the Saints running game. It's no, 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 But I, I think I mean, that's, what, that's why I have a hard time believing that they, you can stop them. You can maybe stop the 49ers, uh, not the 49ers, the Patriots. Are you saying Patriots. That you can't stop them, you can only hope to contain them? Yeah, I, I'm not even sure you can hope to contain them at this point. That's my that's my point. Interesting. All right, what else we got? I hate Drew Brees. Um, <laughs> He's they, a good guy. I'm sure he is. He makes great call, uh, call to medicine commercials. Just the hatred. I know. All right. I, I'm the hater today. Um, game number two. So, Joe's, Joe's already down one right now. Game number two uh, is the Houston Texans with probably their fifth-string quarterback uh, going up against the Baltimore Ravens um, at home. So, who did I draft in my fantasy league? Who did I draft? Matt, Matt Schaub. And, and from that did, moment and, on, it was just a matter of time. who did I draft in the first round of the playoffs? The first round in our... Andre Johnson, man. Oh. Yes. Oh. I had Matt Schaub and Andre Johnson in another league. Yeah, it really was doomed. Yeah, you killed everyone. Um, I want the Texans to win. I don't like Baltimore. Baltimore, I, Baltimore, I, Baltimore University. <laughs> I want the Texans to win. I have a hard time constructing an argument for them. Yeah, this is, a, um, this is one of those games where the Houston Texans are built like the Baltimore Ravens, running the football, play defense. But if you're built like the uh, Ravens, I'm gonna take the Ravens. I'm I'm still taking Suggs and Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and those guys. And, and here's I, my, I, I, here's Flacco's a, a better quarterback than TJ Gates. Here's a better say. question. Here's a better question. If Shaw were healthy right now, who would you take? <sighs> is Andre Johnson healthy for this game? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's been healthy for. I mean, I don't know if he's 100, percent but he's been healthy enough. Well, he's been healthy playing in the well. fantasy playoffs. Yeah, that's right. My powers are amazing. I will eat your children. Praise be a lot. Anyway, uh, sorry, my, my uh, Mike Tyson moment there. We are not affiliated with any of those things. <laughs> All of a sudden, terror alert. It was a Mike Marsh. Tyson joke, kids. Relax. No, they're no, one, no one knows who Mike Tyson because is. Because of respect. They, they think it's a hangover reference. Um, I mean, if Shaw were healthy, would you, who would you favor? I would still favor the Tex. Uh, I would still favor the Ravens. I, However... Yeah. If if Mario Williams were also healthy, uh, that's I, I would point. take the Texans. Um, yeah, I mean, that's why I, whenever I start to try to construct an argument in my mind for why the Texans win this game, I just can't do it. They don't have the, they don't have the players. If they had the players, I will, I will be more than willing to go with them. Their running game is excellent. Yes, and Foster's clearly playing well again. Yes, and, and Ben Tate is like... And, and T.J. Yates is, is okay. He's, he's from Georgia. I mean, he's all right. Great Georgia ball. Oh, wait, he went to Clemson. Never mind. Um, <laughs> so we both take a Baltimore? Yeah, I'm, I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. I, 
All right. Honestly, and this is an interesting thing, I think if the Texans win that game, it is the biggest upset of the playoffs regardless of who else wins. No, it's not bigger than Broncos Steelers. I, I think it would be. How? Because the everybody Steelers were the defending AFC champion. Yeah, but they were really hurt. Oh my god. I mean look, the Texans are are almost as hurt as the Steelers were. I'll take Their best man, defensive right? player is hurt. Their quarterback is hurt. Oh wait, who's their best defensive player? Mario Williams. Oh, Texans. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Go ahead, sorry. So oh, okay, you're, you're making that's a my point. Uh, and, and it would certainly be the biggest upset of this weekend, even if the Broncos won. I, it won't get near the press because of the Tebow thing. I, I think I'll, I'll say this. I think the problem with your argument is, is I think that on the offensive side of the ball, the Broncos are far more limited, even though it's Yates, because they have everything around Yates. Right? If you have Andre Johnson and Arian Foster and Ben Tate, and, and, and I think, offensive line. Yeah, I think the point I is well made that Tebow's passing effort was a real shock sure. in this last game. Even though, I think in retrospect, looking at the way the Steelers defended him, it shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly in this round, it would be the biggest upset, I think, even if Denver beat the Patriots. Because everyone knows the Patriots have one of the historically worst defenses ever. We'll get to that game. And, sure. yeah, so anyway, well, that's a good segue. Let's talk about Let, that Let's go ahead and talk about that game. Let's talk about, uh, uh, let's talk about Tebow. Um, <laughs> for the record, for those of you listening on the radio or on the internet machine, Eric just Tebowed. I Tebowed. Uh, I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. He's good. Uh, here's the thing. I, I love Tim Tebow. I like I like Tim Tebow as a person. I think if we're a good quarterbacks coach, he can become a good quarterback because I think he's a good football player. And I think you can coach accuracy and footwork. That being said, uh... If you give me Brady and Gronkowski and Hernandez and Welker and uh, Branch and whoever else they want Woodhead, the law firm, that that's too much offense at home. Uh, even though historically the the New England Patriots defense is terrible, uh, I don't know if if Tim Tebow can be that great two weeks in a row this early. Yeah, I have to say that's a strong argument. I think that you know. I, I don't. I'm very conflicted about Tebow. Any of you want to know my uh, weird academic thoughts about Tebow? You should check out www.thepermutation.com. Uh, uh, but it's also coming, man. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but in any case, uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know about Tebow. I don't like the way that Tebow gets used by the people who like him. Uh, and I can't mm -hmm. stand to listen to Skip Bayless talk about Tebow. But that's just because he's yeah, we're gonna have a whole conversation. He's being a troll. Tebow, yeah, uh, but I really don't think Tebow is good enough to be consistent. Sure. I will say this. I think if the the Patriots overreact to his success mm -hmm. last week and they over-defend the pass, mm -hmm. uh, then the Broncos could beat them just by running the ball a whole lot. I, I think the problem is that I just don't know that the Broncos' defense is consistent enough to keep the Patriots from scoring. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I mean, I think... the, let's, let's, let's be honest about this. The reason the Broncos won so many games when they were on that streak is predominantly the defense. Sure. And when they haven't been playing well, it has at least partially been the defense. Tebow's also been playing poorly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they didn't play a fantastic game against the Steelers. You know, the, no, the Steelers were really hurt. Roethlisberger could hardly play. And, and they still put up enough points that if... But Tebow was effective in that game. No, I, I'm not talking about Tebow. You're oh, right. right. Tebow played very well in that game. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. The question is whether or not the Broncos' defense can maintain that consistency and... Tebow can put up points. That's what has to happen in this game. I don't see it, uh, but it's a weird it's a weird year. And I really thought that even though the the Patriots defense is so bad, you always get the feeling that Belichick's going to come up with something. Maybe that's we're thinking about a Belichick that doesn't exist anymore. I don't but know. Maybe I I think that um, you, you you've got an old Champ Bailey who's not going to be able to run with Welker. Yep. Even if he can, uh, Aaron Hernandez was a monster in this game last time. Gronkowski is a monster. Gronkowski is a beast. Uh, oh, here's a tidbit for all you fantasy listeners out there. Uh, I'm taking Steven, I'm taking Gronkowski in the first round of a fantasy football game. Yeah, he, he will be he, as highly drafted as the San Diego Chargers tight uh, end yeah, was. Gates, when Gates was hot. When yeah, Gates absolutely. was hot. And, and I don't think at any point during that period of time, Gates had the kind of year that justified how highly ranked he was absolutely. in any fantasy game. But I think Gronkowski could. You could you could literally go Gronkowski and then get your number one wide receiver in the second round. Yep. 
and then an elite quarterback in the third round. Yep. And by definition, you have two elite receivers. Try that out in our league. I'm tempted. I'm tempted. I, I mean, I, I did have some good. I did have some. Uh, I, I had the New Orleans uh, cornerback uh, uh, tight end this year, so I was real pleased with my tight end production mm-hmm. in fantasy. But Gronkowski is a different beast, or at least he has been. Yeah, he's incredible. He's like six foot. Three All right, so four. are we both picking New England in that yeah, game? Yeah, we're both picking New England. All right, fair like enough. All right, last game. Um, probably the most interesting game, and maybe the hardest to pick, um, is the New York Giants, circa uh, 2007, uh, versus <laughs> the defending Super Bowl champions, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. I have a very strong feeling about this game. Is your feeling that the, the Giants are going to win? Because that seems to be what's really popular all of a sudden. No. I think the Giants are going to get housed. I agree with you. I can't believe we kind of both wow. agree on that. I, I, I think I think I've, everyone I've been, is very, sh- I've been shocked by this sudden love affair with the New York Giants. Well, it's kind of the thing they're like, look, they did it in 07 with the four defensive ends playing down all the time against these pure passing teams. And I think what people kind of tend to forget is um, just how good the Green Bay Packers are. Yes. Just how good. Uh, when, when you have Greg Jennings, and then that slot, um, I can't remember the other wide receiver's name, Jordan Nelson, as the number two wide receiver. And then you've got all those other weapons, the tight end. Uh, Aaron he hasn't Rogers. even played that well for them this year. Yeah, absolutely. And he gets rid of the ball as about as fast as anybody else in the NFL to where that pass rush could get mitigated because they thought the short game is as good as anyone. Well, and this is the thing I think everybody forgets from the Atlanta-New York game, and it's easy to forget everything else because we played so poorly on offense. You, your team played poorly. <laughs> Go ahead and try to distance yourself. I'll welcome you back on the bandwagon after we win a couple games next year. Uh, But everybody forgets that the Atlanta defense, which is by no means a good defense, and was missing its best cornerback in the person of Brent Tiny, uh, or Optimus Grimes, as he likes to call himself. Optimus Grimes, really? Yeah, I thought that was a fantastic nickname. I mean, I still hate the Falcons, but that's an awesome nickname. Yeah, but Brent Grimes not playing. Sure, sure. Uh, The Atlanta defense not really known for being particularly good. No. Uh, But they they were fine, though. But they held New York to virtually nothing in the first half of that game. And Mm -hmm. I'm convinced the only reason why we gave up as many points as we did later in that game was the, the defense was tired and dispirited. Because the offense was so so bad, and, and going for a stupid fourth and I think arguably Green Bay's defense is is better than ours. They certainly make more big plays on defense than Absolutely. the Falcons. They, they've got more playmakers. They have Clay Matthews. They've got Charles Woodson. They've got yep. all the other cornerbacks. Listen, Aaron Rodgers, December fourth at New York at uh, New York against the New York Giants, three hundred sixty nine yards, four touchdowns, one interception. Yeah, listen, the kid's good. Yeah, I like Eli Manning, and this could be another shootout in the sense of, like, the last game. Yeah. But this will be a shootout in the 45 to 31 range. No, I agree with you. I agree with you, and and I really feel like the media has gotten uh, influenced by the idea that it would be great if one of the New York football teams was good. This always happens. It's that media. What if the Knicks were good? Yes, this is the New York bias of all, like, sports media, which makes absolutely no sense because they kind of – the Giants are a good team. They, 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 let's not kid ourselves. They're not. A, they're not bad, but they're not this super team that everyone thinks they are. Yes. And can they score? Yes. But I don't think they can contain Aaron Rodgers when that team is humming on all cylinders. No. The only way that the Giants win this football game, the only way, is that front four must be amazing. Yeah. And, and, and I and I mean amazing in the sense of like forcing eight to ten sacks. Amazing. Yeah, well, if they play comparatively as well, if they put as much pressure on Rodgers as they put on Matt Ryan, I'm still not sure that's enough because Aaron sure. Rodgers is so good at reading defenses and finding the. I, I think you're starting to like agree with me on Matt Ryan because there was very no. I mean, on look, Matt dude, Matt Ryan is not Aaron Rodgers. All right, that that's not even an argument. Aaron Rodgers is playing as well or better than any quarterback has ever played. Well, one was a number three pick in the draft. Other one was twenty four. Really no, I mean, yeah, I mean, whatever. Hindsight 2020 and all that, who knows? I, would I mean, trade, if, I would if you want me to criticize the Falcons' coaching ability, I will. It's entirely possible I'll trade we drafted. Ben I'll trade Ben Ryan for him. You forget, we drafted Favre, too. Favre? Favre. All right. So Stay we're both, in Mississippi, son. So so we're both taking the pack. Yep. So we're, we're, so we're all, so and Chris Berman, we're all oh, on no, the No, no. No? No. No, no Chris Berman. No Chris Berman. No. Shall I, shall I drop some 70s pop culture references? Sure. Show a clip of myself catching a football from Steve Young in Tampa Bay. I mean, I don't understand what the problem is. I mean, it was only yesterday. You know, most right. people grow in their lives. Anyway. anyway. All right, so we've got 
the ball, the Ravens, the Packers, and the Patriots, and we're going head to head. I've got the 49ers. Joe's taking the Saints. Uh, Joe's not a true Falcons fan because he chose Saints. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you, I thought they were dead to you. They are dead to me now. Like I've I've been a Falcons fan longer than you have. Ah, <sighs> that's true. All right. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the coaching changes. Uh, let, let's talk about the ones that makes the most sense. Jeff Fisher to St. Louis makes sense. He's the, probably the best coach out there. Uh, absent. All right, um, fair enough. But I want you to go on the record about this because the theory about Jeff Fisher, all of a sudden that he's not as popular. There are a bunch of people who said that he talked down uh, the quarterback Vince Young while he was there, and that he wasn't a very good coach. Vince I think Young those people are girl. crazy. Vince Young's a punk. Okay, well, I'll take the punk thing. I don't know about the little girl. I, I have a little girl, and she's pretty awesome. So you're Vince Young, not than, awesome. She's, saying, you're saying she's not tougher. tougher than Vince Young. You sure about that? Well, I mean, she, I'm she, saying. she's not very tough, but she's awesome. Well, I think she's tougher I don't know. Than Vince Young. It, it, Vince, I thought Vince Young was punk. I think it kind of showed this year in Philadelphia. And all this nonsense about how Crazy. Jeff Fisher talked his, uh, talked his quarterback down. Jeff Fisher did an amazing job in Tennessee for mm-hmm. many years Agreed. of producing really good outcomes with subpar talent. Agreed. Their drafting made the Falcons drafting look decent at times. And that's, you know, t- period for period, one of the worst drafts. Ever. I will say this. They did a home run with Chris Johnson, <clears throat> regardless of yes. Chris Johnson performance this year. Yes. But they did a home run with that one. Vince Young at one point looked like a competent quarterback. But I think Jeff Fisher can coach. Yeah. Um, I mean, who, who's better than him? That's out. That's Coward, but, uh, but that's maybe. That's I don't it. think Coward wants to coach. I don't think Coward wants to coach. I, I don't think, think Coward more, will ever I, coach. I think the more that he does TV, the more he's like, I don't have to deal with that. Why, why would you coach if you could get paid as much as he's getting paid for television? I, I agree. I, I think the alternative to like coaching for him is not as attractive. No. All right, um, but Jeff Fisher makes a ton of sense. Jeff Fisher's to St. Louis. That means uh, you Stephen Jackson owners out there need to be excited because he will run Stephen Jackson. Um, he's not going to let him get uh, Brad, uh, uh, Bradshaw Bradford get beat up in the pocket. He's going to now, run that, the That's fair, although I'm really interested to see if Jeff Fisher can coach a high-powered passing attack. Because I don't think he ever, attacks. he never had that ability. Well, I'm not saying he didn't have the ability. He didn't have the opportunity to do that in Tennessee. Well, he had, well hold on. He had been there. And then there was a who you know I love, but I, I think very good quarterback. I don't think he was a great passer. He was um, one of the toughest quarterbacks ever, one of the and he was a winner, right? And, 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 uh, but he, 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 he was not a great passer. I, I, I thought him and Derek Mason were fine together. Um, they were one inch away from me in Super Bowl. No, they were. That was a great year for them. Steve he was Wise a winner. Had. I love Steve McNair. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I really read him wrong when he was in college. I thought he would become one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history. Absolutely, at Alcorn State. When I mean, it's Alcorn State. Sorry, all you Alcorn State fans. Um, y'all probably aren't listening anyway. Uh, but yeah, I thought Steve McNair was going to be a great quarterback. But Jeff Fisher's fine. Um, to St. Louis, uh, St. Louis got a good head coach. Let's talk about what, in my opinion, has to be the most head scratching decision of a head coach that I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow, that fight was a drop. That's a shame. You've got to say Mike right. Malarkey. Listen, <laughs> take away take away what we know about Mike Malarkey. Here's what I want you to focus on. The Jacksonville Jaguars statistically had the worst offense in the NFL yep. this year. They have a young quarterback. Now, MJD is fantasy goldness. I get this. But there was the worst offense. So if I'm sitting in my uh, executive chair in the offices of the Jacksonville Jaguars, do I want who do I want to run my football team to help us score points? I know the guy who was able to get a full zero points out of his offense in a playoff game. That makes absolutely no sense. I think even if you weren't particularly knowledgeable about football, and and all you knew was that the Falcons' offense statistically ranked pretty well the last couple of years. Okay. And that's sure. all you knew. And, and you were convinced that, that Malarkey was your guy because of that. If you watch that game against the Giants, I don't understand how you wouldn't pull the trigger and run scared. Because that's one of the most pathetic offensive performances. It's historically bad. No team has ever only scored two points before in a playoff game. How do you don't at least put the brakes on long enough to say, is this really who we want? Now, I think anyone who knows football and watched the Atlanta Falcons for the last couple of years would be hard-pressed to defend Malarkey, certainly Malarkey's run play calling, which is absolutely barbaric and, and awful. And, I, and okay. I think you are more down on his, his, his uh, 
play calling in the passing game even than I am. Sure. But it's not good. I mean, this guy, we were last in the league in screen pass yardage. Last. And, and this is a team whose quarterback was getting sacked on the regular and getting pressured so much that we couldn't throw the ball downfield. I, I will say this about Michael Larkin's play call. The one problem that I had, I don't know if I'm as upset about the lack of a screen game given who our starting running back is. I think that if we had we, Snelling, we had Jaquiz Rogers. Sure, Don't tell sure, me we didn't have anybody sure, to throw that. Sure, but that too. means that we're doing the screen passes on third down, which inevitably could make sense because it gives I you don't think it does. Right? I think I, I'm, look, well, whatever. But fast forward part, past that. Sure, issue. fast forward. My issue was more uh, on the the lack of a play action passing game. Yes, I thought our play action passing awful was ter- was terrible. And if you it's had, terrible. You terrible. Charles Barkley, terrible. terrible. It is terrible. It's terrible. You knock a head. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Um. My thing about, like, now you're going to a football team that has a young quarterback. Yep. But has an elite running game. Yep. Because their offensive line, they can run the football. You probably want to work on your play-action pass. Now, they ain't got no receivers. No. Now, let me just say right now. Uh, the last one they had got a receiver uh, for Coke. Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That makes sense. Yeah. Um, listen, um, uh, Blackman from Oklahoma State. Come on down to Jacksonville because you are going to get drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars. That that makes sense, but I, I don't I don't I don't grasp that one. Now, well, and, that, and they just hired the quarterbacks coach from the Falcons too. I don't even know who that was. No, I, I don't either. But I, I'm not sure that you look at any of the work that's been done with Matt Ryan and and, that, and that I, glowingly. That, about I it. will say this. I will say this. If Mike Malarkey and the quarterbacks coach go down to Jacksonville. And I'm assuming they draft uh, Blackman from Oklahoma State. That dude's a beast. Yeah. There's a there's a fantasy nigga for you too. Uh, draft Blackman when he gets picked. No, okay. Um, Shout out to Neil Blackman who's listening to this podcast. Neil Blackman, what up? Hey girl, uh, hey. Hey girl, hey. Um, if the Jacksonville Jaguars offense looks good and like uh, I don't, what's the quarterback's name for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Matt Moore. No, 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 no. That's Florida. That's oh, Florida. I'm sorry. Um, I have no idea. I mean, that guy. Um, if he like shows market improvement, then I think you also are going to be this is going to become a referendum on Matt Ryan. Like if Mike Malarkey's play calling and the quarterbacks coach turn that quarterback into a a legitimate NFL quarterback, then the question then becomes then what's wrong with Matt Ryan? That's I think you're opinion. right in the sense that people will ask that question. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it isn't really a referendum on. Uh, the, the whoever the offensive coordinator for the Jaguars is going to be. Because if you're a Jacksonville Jaguar fan, you have one ray of, of hope in the sea of darkness that is Mike Malarkey, and that is that he has already announced that he is not going to be calling plays. So Which is important. whoever is calling plays for the Jaguars, uh, they may end up being a genius. Blank but, ever. but if I'm Maurice Jones Drew, I'm seriously considering retirement. Because if you look <laughs> at the way that Malarkey called the run, there's no way that even Mojo could possibly play well in that system. We ran, I saw us run a single counterplay this entire year. So we both agree, um, Mike Malarkey, probably Terrible. Good. What do you think about Romeo Cornell as the permanent? I like Cron- uh, Cornell, or C- C- whatever. Um, here's the problem. Uh, the Bellatrix uh, coaching tree has not performed well. No, it hasn't. Um, now, he's I mean, he seems of- like the least miserable of those people. No, he seems generally a happy-go-lucky person. Now, he had zero talent uh, in Cleveland. He's got maybe one talent in Kansas. He's got a little bit of talent in Kansas. He's got Derek Johnson and Dwayne Bowe. I mean, when when you're willing, willfully starting Orton, you, you don't have a lot. Yeah, they're they're getting a the quarterback somehow, somewhere. Um, but Cornell's uh, he's not Cornell's awful. fine. Well, yeah, Cornell's fine. And in that division, uh, you, you I mean, who, who's going to out coach you? Um, Turner in San Diego? No. No. Uh, Fox. Which I can't talking? believe they kept him. Fox in Cleveland. Are Fox and uh, t- uh, uh, different? Maybe. Eh. I, I mean, I, I will give John Fox this much. He realized his passing game without Tebow was so bad, there was no way they could possibly win mm-hmm. with a conventional passing attack. Mm-hmm. And so he committed to the to the Tebow offense, which I don't know is necessarily such a great referendum on the Tebow offense as it is on John Fox's willingness to be flexible, to think yes, outside the which, box. which is something that a lot of coaches... Yep. Don't have. And, and and I never thought of him as a particularly flexible guy. He always seemed like a nice person. Mm-hmm. I always liked him, but I don't know. 
I mean, maybe he does outcoach him in Denver. He'll certainly have I mean, a lot more press. The, you, you, we've got the new guy in um, Oakland who I don't know who that is. Well, the the Raiders announced he would get to be the GM. And I, and, and this is going to oh, be... Oh, the new GM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will be the GM as well. And I, and I think this is... Or am I misspeaking? Is it that there's a new GM and they, have, a new GM and they, and they have haven't picked a coach? They haven't picked a coach. Okay. The, this is going to be a really, a really interesting time in Oakland. Because for the first time you're going to get to see what the Raiders look like without Al Davis messing around with the team. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to Mr. Davis and his family and everybody who liked him, but I think he was not doing good things for that franchise at the end. And we'll yeah. see. We'll see what happens. You know, I, I think one of the, the biggest regrets I, I would think that Al Davis has or had uh, was taking uh, Russell over uh, Calvin Johnson. I yeah. think that he was persuaded because – Russell isn't the kind of player that he would have drafted at quarterback. Yep. Get based on his history, but Calvin Johnson was the type of receiver he would I mean, have taken with the number. Literally one defines the concept of vertical passing attack. Yes. Which is what Al Davis is known for. Absolutely. Uh, so I, you know, he, he probably is having regrets about that. But I think sure. I think we're in you know we're in uncharted territory with the Raiders. Yes. No one knows what's going to happen. No, no one knows what's going to happen with the Raiders. Once again, though, they're probably I'll be interested to see who their coach is. I, they haven't. They've been unwilling to pick anyone who has a name. They they they'll leave the league in penalties once again. Uh, next topic. Uh, LeBron James. We're switching up from football to basketball here. Uh, the great one, uh, LeBron James. I'm also not an Atlanta Hawks fan anymore. Uh, yeah, they're dead to me. Yeah, Al, Al Horford out three months with a shoulder injury. I, I I've said it before. I'll say it again. Al Horford does not belong on this team because he's a winner. Ah, uh, that is true. That is true. Hey, we got your team. Um, uh, LeBron James... Take last... another three, Josh Smith. Take another three. No. That's your strength. Josh Smith has the highest arc of any jump shot I have ever seen. Uh, it, I that saw man, him do it again last night. Every time he drains a three, the coach should hit him in the face. That man, that man's shot starts somewhere around the ceiling, and then it takes about a good five seconds to drop. I've never seen anything. All right, well, LeBron, back to LeBron. LeBron James. Uh, last two games, struggled in the fourth quarter. Um, Chris Bosh in the GQ magazine... Uh, they ask him, who do you want to take the last shot? He says Dwayne Wade because he's a winner. Uh, do you think the team has confidence? Let's not talk about like the obvious Skip Bayless, LeBron James sucks arguments. Right. Do you think the team has confidence in LeBron James? Well, let me put it this way. I don't think that question even matters. I think the only questions that matter are, does Bosch have faith in LeBron James? Does Dwayne Wade have faith in LeBron James? And does the coach have faith in LeBron James? Because let's face it, everyone else who is on that team is irrelevant. They don't get a say. No, no, no. I don't think that Dwayne Wade has confidence in LeBron. I don't don't think Eric Spolster gets a say. Um, Well, I I do, though. See, I think the the talk about how he's a a paper figure is wrong. I think Spolster is actually in charge. Listen, as a man named Eric with the correct spelling, Eric Spolster gets my vote of approval. But I will say this. Um... I'm a huge LeBron James fan. I, it is, it is without, you know, question, my beliefs on LeBron James and where he ranks on the path down the NBA players from a skill set standpoint. Now, his struggles in the fourth quarter probably have been magnified now that he's come to the heat. Um, but I will say this. In his body, he has more talent than Wade and Bosch. Yes. Now, is he a good jump shooter? No, which means if you're going to have him spotting up at the three-point line, taking the last shot, it's probably not the play you want to Well, play. and to his credit, he admitted in the offseason that he needed to develop his outside shot better. Right, and, he, and his pulse game is, gotten, is getting phenomenal. Yes. Well, can the Atlanta Hawks like get Olajuwon to be their head coach? Is that possible? Uh, you know, the Atlanta Hawks are never going to hire anyone decent as their head oh, coach sorry, as I long as we don't have a real I, I missed the Atlanta Hawks. Thank coach. you, Liberty Media, by the way. Sorry. Or is it that the Atlanta Spirit Group? Balls of heart. Uh, Atlanta well, Spirit Group, if you're listening, sell the team. You guys suck. You guys suck about as good. Sell the team. You, you guys... <sighs> Let me say two words to you, Spirit Group. Arthur Blank. Arthur Can I get Mark Cuban to buy the Hawks team? It just like runs your franchise. Can I get Mark Cuban to buy the Braves? Let's not talk about that. I will say it for the next podcast. Um, I, I think the team has confidence in him. I think Bosch probably was a little bit too honest. Um... Because I don't even know that it matters whether Bosch has any faith in him. No, no, no. Bosch is not going to be feeding him in the fourth no, quarter. No, no, no. Bosch will be feeding him in the fourth quarter. I think the thing about LeBron James is, is I think he is a tad too sensitive. Sure. And I think he's the kind of guy 
who, for the most part, throughout his entire career, high school included, he's always been the liked guy. Yep. And now that he's getting the criticism, he's not used to that. And, and, and I truly, I mean, I guess I understand it, but... And he's 20, like, You're six. LeBron James. What does it matter to you what anyone else thinks? Because he's, he's still a 26-year-old man. And we've all been... I, like I didn't care that much when I was 26. Sure, but look at it this way. If you have millions and millions of dollars, and you've always been loved, and you all have yes men, and then all of a sudden... No, that's true. You oh, get yeah. raked over the coals. Because for all intents and purposes, you have what amounts to maybe 10 games in your whole NBA career. Where you've just been terrible, yeah. You know that, that, that could be that could be it. Now, here's an interesting question that I don't think that some people have kind of toyed with is that if they don't win this year, either Wade or LeBron gets traded. Now, I don't think Wade gets traded because he was dragged by the organization. I think LeBron's the new guy, and I think Bosch is irrelevant, and trading him wouldn't get them the pieces that they would probably look for. So, I'm I'm asking this question: If you are the owner of the Orlando Magic. And the Heat say we will trade you LeBron for the White House straight up. Do you say yes? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's not not even without a hesitation. I would sign that paper before the ink got dry. We'd be off. Well, first of all, because the Magic are going to lose Dwight Howard. They're sure. going to lose him. Sure, I agree. If if they could get a player of Le, of LeBron James caliber, absolutely. which let's face it, there's maybe three of them in the entire league. Maybe yes. really at, at generous. Stage, yes. Yeah, of course they would take that trade. This is my. I think this question is more interesting now. Does the Heat trade Dwayne Wade because his body can't take it anymore? I think that there is a school of thought that agrees with you that Dwayne Wade will be the more likely candidate to get traded because I think he's for pro. I think he's like twenty nine or thirty. Like he's like he's, he's not an much old thirty. Though. He, he's an old he's thirty been with a lot since of miles. college. Like he's he's not going to be Kobe where he's where he could be Kobe where he's thirty four, but he's an old thirty four, yeah. and you can start to see it. Now, if you, if I was the Orlando Magic and I got um, offered Dwayne Wade for Dwight Howard, I would strongly consider saying no. Because of age, because of his body and the injuries. Why would you say no? You're you're going to lose Dwight anyway. What are you okay. going to get that's better than Dwayne Wade? Draft picks? Do you want to? No, get no, that? no, no. It's not, and the NBA draft picks don't matter because unless you're getting no, I, top, I agree with that top three pick, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Um, unless, but yeah. if the Lakers were stupid enough to trade me Bynum and Gasol and a handful of picks, I would take that over Dwayne sure. Wade. Because I'm getting two seven footers, I can find, um, you know, another Dwayne Wade ish type player. In I the, mean, in, buying him in Gasol and picks versus Wade, yeah, I'd take that deal. Yeah, I, I take that deal. There, now, uh, not, by the way, I think this is all fantasy because I don't think I don't think either LeBron or Dwayne Wade are going to get traded, and no. and here's why: because there is a reason why the Miami Heat gets discussion in the media gets attendance, mm-hmm. and that reason is because they have both of those guys. They didn't get it when they just had Dwayne Wade. Agreed. You know, maybe they would have gotten it if they just had LeBron James, but it's because having both of those guys is unique. Absolutely. Uh, how many games do you think the Miami Heat lose this season? There is a 66-game schedule? Yes. I think they lose 10 games. I still have them at 8. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I think that's really hard to predict. But that just Nobody just knows fun. what the end of this season is going to be like because, because of, all of all the, the, game the games that are close fresh. to each other. Yes, absolutely. Which is ridiculous. Can we just admit that sure, they, they overshot the number of games you needed? Yeah, they could they have had a 50-game season. It would have been a very 50-game nice. season would have been better. Six and I'll tell you the reason they didn't do that because the NBA, is scared to, no, the NBA is scared to death that people will realize they only need 50 games anyway. I agree. I agree. And the players would then say, wait a minute, we're playing yeah. games. All right, last topic. Um... And I do apologize to you all boxing fans. Uh, the, Joe had, knows nothing about boxing. You uh, liar. We're, we, we're going to talk I about... I was watching uh, Muhammad Ali fight when you weren't even a gleam in your daddy's eye. That, that's probably true, but it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Uh, Floyd Mayweather calls out uh, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao on Twitter. Wait, we're really even talking about boxing now? Yes, we're talking about boxing. You, we're talking you, about you, cockfighting. Would you rather talk about NASCAR? We're talking about dogfighting. You want to talk about NASCAR? Fewer people are hurt in NASCAR. Crickets. All right. <laughs> Uh, We're really going to talk about this. Okay, fine. Yes. All right. Now. I feel dirty. You, you need should, a shower. You, you, well, there are other reasons you need a shower. <laughs> uh, Shout out to Nick Shulo. Ow. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Manny Pacquiao, biggest fight in boxing, probably biggest fight in boxing since uh, maybe some of the Tyson Holyfield days. Um, in terms of like, yeah, like maybe money, bigger. Maybe bigger than that. I mean, um, it would be the biggest fight in how many years? I would say the last mega. Well. I don't know if you want to count like Floyd Oscar De La Hoya as a mega fight, but no. from a popularity standpoint. But in terms of like money generating potential, it's probably the biggest fight since Holyfield Tyson. 
Yeah, it's got to be one of the Tyson fights. Right, and, and if, you're, if we're talking about... How many years is that? I, I hate to even ask because it's going to make me feel old. We're talking about... Nine, yeah, five, we're almost eight. talking about 20 years. We're, we're almost talking, talking about two decades. And if we're talking about non-heavyweight, you're, you yep. have to go like, to like Leonard Heather? Yep, yep. Which is the age. She's like 30 years ago. I'm so old. No, some of you weren't even born and you're listening to this podcast. All right. Um, the question is this. We all know Floyd Mayweather's court case. If you're not aware, Floyd Mayweather uh, played guilty to a bunch of charges. He sent us to 87 days in jail. Um, but the court system moved back the date. Does someone want to come in? No. All right. Floyd Mayweather, had, the court system moved the date back to allow for Floyd to fight on May the 5th. Uh, Bob Aaron, Pacquiao's promoter, uh, is refusing to make the fight. So the question is twofold. A, is pa- do you think Pacquiao was scared? And B, who do you think wins the fight? I don't think Pacquiao is scared. I honestly think Pacquiao doesn't care. I, I mean, I think Floyd cares about this fight. I think he's always cared about it one way or the other. Sure. I know we disagree about this, but I think the first time they tried to get the fight together, Floyd didn't want to fight because he wanted to retire undefeated, and he felt like Pacquiao had a good shot of beating him. Okay. You know, We can debate about whether or not that's true. I don't know that it even matters anymore, but I think sure. the, the fight now matters to Floyd, sure. particularly after Pacquiao didn't look very good in the last fight. No. And Floyd now thinks he's got a really good chance of beating him. But I don't think it matters whether or not Pacquiao is interested. I don't think Pacquiao cares. I think Pacquiao's team does not want the fight at this point. And I think particularly they're very happy to tweak Floyd Mayweather. They're very happy to think that if the fight happens eventually, that they will have had, they will have gotten into Mayweather's head. They will have denied him of the opportunity to have the fight before he goes to jail. If they fight him after the jail sentence, it's not going to be any better for him. He'll have been in jail. You know, so I, who wins that fight? If the fight happens on May 5th, I think it's a toss-up. Because I, I do think that Pacquiao hasn't given his all for the last few fights. And I think he's a good fighter. Uh, I think if it happens after the jail sentence, I'd give Pacquiao a better chance. All right. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with your premise that Floyd cares about his O. I think everybody knows that Floyd's a little bit uh, delusional about a lot of things in his life. Yes. Um, however, uh, I think that... Um, People kind of made the same argument about uh, Shane Mosley before his decline. Sugar Shane. Sugar Shane Mosley. Uh, and Floyd took him apart when he said for maybe 30 seconds of that fight. I think, however, what was in his head bigger was maybe his father and some other people in his ear saying that Pacquiao was on steroids and that Pacquiao was some sort of like juiced up monster. And I think that played into a lot of his thinking, which brought about the drug testing claims and all that other stuff. But what happened is when he fought Marquez, and Marquez is a top five pound pound fighter. Uh, shout out to Dan Raphael, all the freaks, what's up? Um, he realized that he's an ordinary fighter. Like he's probably not juicing. And he's probably not any different than he was at 135. Uh, with that being said, I love Manny Pacquiao from a person standpoint. This gets closer to that Tim Tebow thing where you love the person, yeah. but you want to separate the person from the performance. For Floyd Mayweather is a boxer. That is his job. That is what he does. Manny Pacquiao is a congressman. He does it so much he does it when he's not even doing his job. Hey, oh. shout out to the criminal justice system. There you go. Contracts. Get you out of jail. Um, Manny Pacquiao is a congressman. He loves playing basketball. and He, he loves performing concerts. He's, he's a celebrity. Now, do Millions I think of Manny hits. Pa- do I think Manny Pacquiao is a talented fighter? Yes. I think, however, that he is not... Technically better. He's not a technically better boxer. I'm and, not sure he's ever Mark, a technically better boxer, and, and, but he was more explosive. There was definitely sure, a time but, but, when he was more explosive. Sure, but a lot of people are very explosive hitting uh, uh, Antonio Margarito, who can't move and defend himself. Yeah, I but mean, my point is this. If he, if there was ever a fight outside of Mayweather that Pacquiao was up for, it wouldn't have been Marquez. Because the first two Marquez fights were darn close. And the first two Marquez fights, a lot of people believe that Marquez either won both of those fights or at least split them. Pacquiao wanted the Marquez fight because Pacquiao thought, I'm going to shut everyone out and prove just how good of a fighter I've become. And not only did he not shut everyone out, he should have lost that fight. He did lose that fight. Um, listen, Floyd Mayweather, for all of his things outside the boxing ring that he does that are idiotic, um, is at this moment head and shoulders above anyone else pound for pound talent-wise. He is a better defender. He is faster. He is more accurate with his punches, and he can crack if he has to. Uh, he he will pick Pacquiao apart. This fight will be very close early, maybe first couple of rounds, 
But once Pacquiao is, can't get to Floyd with like he can other fighters, Floyd will probably stop him mid mid fight. This this fight, in my opinion, at this stage is not close. Now, if he goes to jail, right. And he comes out, and he was the first fight. <coughs> I have a sneaky suspicion that I don't know if that changes the dynamic as much as, as much as like uh, uh, Plaxico Burr's going to jail for two years, or, or Mike. Well, Vick, how long is his sentence? It's not that long. It's it's less than three months. Right. So if and he could get he could get out <coughs> sooner. He choking on choking on. Sorry about that. He's crying because he loves Floyd Mayweather. Um, <laughs> it could be sooner because he could get out for good behavior. So if he gets out for good behavior, has three months to train. No, you're right. It, it's, it's, it's probably not, not going to affect it's, it's him not, physically. It, it's not, but it's I, not do the, the, I do the think I do think it would affect him mentally. I do think that he's outraged. I wouldn't be shocked at all to discover that the Pacquiao camp had made representations to his people that they would fight and then went back on their word. I really think the sure. Pacquiao camp didn't like him. Sure, uh, I agree. And, and I can understand why they wouldn't. Sure. You know, the, the guy's a racist. Uh, the guy's said that they're fighters juicing. Uh, you know, and, and the, the, the man has are, no moral authority. The expressions are just expressing all of them. Joe Bellin. Joe Bellin's alone. Please contact Joe Bellin at JoeBellin.com. <laughs> there is no Joe Bellin at At least I hope there is. We'll make up. Uh, yeah, I, he's a bad, I mean, he's a bad guy. And I don't want to say he's a bad guy. He, no, is, no, is, he is, is a bad guy. He, he pled guilty to domestic assault. Sure, but he's a racist. Here, here's what I'll say. These are here, not in dispute. Sure, but here are all things that are not in dispute. Uh, he has a lot of charities in Las Vegas. Oh, that makes Minnesota. it better. Hold on. There's a lot for uh, homeless in Las Vegas. Every time that there's a major... Bo- Joe Frazier's funeral was paid for by Floyd Mayweather. You're really not trying to excuse his domestic no, 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 assault no, no, by no, no, saying no, 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 that he no, gives no. money away. No, no, no. The question is... The question is... He's a bad I, guy. I don't want to... No, no, no. I think there are worse people out there. Well, okay. That's not but, even but, an argument. But that doesn't mean that he's a bad guy. Does he, he's he, a bad there's guy. Different, there's a difference between people who make mistakes and people who are bad people. Uh, look, you can make... There are a lot of different ways you can make mistakes. I'll even be willing to forgive him the ridiculous rant about Pacquiao, the racist rant about Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the domestic assault thing is an entirely different category. Let's not let's not play around. Sure, it, no, it's no, way no, too no, common no, in no, sports to forgive no, violence against no, 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 women. No, 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 I am not one of those people who no, will forgive it, that. He's a bad guy. Sure. The question is is not of his character; it's of his talent. Well, no, he's opinion. extraordinarily talented. Sure. That's not even a question. Look, uh, I think. I, I thought for a while this fight would happen. I'm beginning to question whether it's going to. I, I, I agree. I question if it's going to fight happen. Because I think one of two things will happen. If he goes to jail and there's no fight. I think Pacquiao will retire. Yep. Um, what they, incentive does Pacquiao have to do this? I don't think he needs more money. He, no. Pacquiao has one of the worst contracts in boxing. Yes. Um, unfortunately for his... his, his but, but his but, boxing contract, I mean, doesn't even begin to approach... What he gets from his status in the Philippines. No, no. Which but, is unrivaled. But, however, he, he could be looking at somewhere north $65 million. Yes. Uh, but, but be that as it may. Um, I, the, who I like as a person is a little bit different. But I think that if the fight takes place afterward, I think it, for those of you who remember the Floyd Mayweather Arturo Gotti fight, uh, Gotti did something very similar that enraged Floyd Mayweather. And Gotti suffered a beating at the hands of Floyd Mayweather. I don't think Gotti was nearly the fighter that Pacquiao is. No, I'm not saying necessarily that, but I think... You're Gotti, saying it's a mistake to... It's, to, it's, it's one of those things where... You should the Rex. Right. It's one of those things, like, remember like people like you didn't want to make Tyson angry? Because you wouldn't like him when he's angry? Whatever. I, I always thought that was redundant. Tyson, during Tyson, that period of time, Tyson woke up angry, sure, he fought but, angry. But there was a lot of guys who kind of used to like tweet Tyson, and then, God forbid, they suffered a, 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 a savage beating. At the hands of Tyson. Sure. I mean, honestly, so, the reason I feel like this fight isn't going to happen is because I think Pacquiao just doesn't care. And I, I, think, I don't know what will happen at this point. It, Pacquiao doesn't seem to care. His people don't seem to want the fight. I don't know what's going to happen to make this fight take place. And and let's just be honest about this. Boxing is not a sport anymore. Oh, my God. We're not going to have that conversation. Listen. Look, and it has Box- nothing to do with whether or not it's athletic. It has nothing to do with the quality of the competition. It is not a sport because it is not organized. What do you mean it's not? It, it is run by a loosely affiliated sure. series of thugs and mob people. Like there is no, there's no other sport in which this happens. The Lakers don't have to Dude. petition Dude. to get a game do with the Hawks. Do you know how? Do you know how? Do you know how gangster horse racing is right now? Well, it is so thugnificent. <laughs> you don't understand what the horses are. Yeah, you're right. Play. I don't understand. You don't the understand the plight of the horses. <laughs> Shout out to all my West Side horses out there. That's right. <laughs> there you go. So, 
No, uh, it's not. It's not a sport. It has nothing to do. I, I I grew up loving boxing. I watched a lot of boxing. My dad was a, a had sparred with a you know a light heavyweight champion. We had a, a boxing bag in my basement. I learned how to fight. I watched a lot of the classic fights in the Ali Larry Holmes era. Mm-hmm. It's. Even during that time, and it was corrupt, but even during that time, there was some sense that the organization of the sport existed. That sense is gone. I don't, there is no organization to boxing. I, I don't know if... I, I, I think you're making a claim more so about the um, like the number of champions and organizational bodies and those things. Yeah, it does. And, and I think those people... I think you're right on that, sir, but I don't think that invalidates the actual sport itself. But it's not a sport. But, I mean, you're right. Any individual boxing match is an athletic event. But it's not an organized sport. It, sure, it may not be. Th- this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Sure, I mean, we shouldn't be think... sitting here having this conversation about whether or not the the two fighters that everyone agrees are the best. No, aren't I, I, fighting, I think... won't fight, I, get I... to opt not to fight. If you, it's like Nick Saban deciding he doesn't want to play LSU, but that I mean, doesn't happen. But I mean, by that logic, Joe, that means you wouldn't like the BCS. Oh gosh, that would be terrible. Uh, Shout out to the BCS eight game playoff, you jackasses. Uh, ooh, Joe, that's a bad word. Um. I, I will say this. Uh, we will have conversations Sorry, about playoff. I should oh, say. There you go. Uh, I, I think there's a there, uh, there's a conversation to be made. I think the reason that the fight is not happening is is one person and and one person alone. That's Bob Arum. You be, could be right. And, and I think that is the, the key issue. But I think we both agree that Joe Bell knows nothing about boxing. <laughs> Um, and I am now a. Uh, I like how the, the number of things I've said about boxing that you've been like, yeah, and then at the end you're like, you know nothing. Yeah, I don't think that's true. I don't think anybody recorded me saying that. Um, <laughs> So, on behalf of myself, I think those are the... I think we're done today. Yes, we are. We'll see you next time. The inaugural Missed on Points podcast. We'll be back next week to talk about more things you wish...